Imagination has always been the defining trait and saving grace of humanity. Our capacity to believe in visionary ideas or outlandish notions is a source of great power and terrible vulnerability. That's why it's paramount to differentiate between the great dreamers of our time and those who seek to manipulate and exploit us. In order to do so, you should scrutinize the merits of both the individual and their dream. The first question you should ask yourself is whether the dream makes any sense. We should constantly question ideas. There is a biblical story that gives brilliant wisdom in this regard. A long time ago, the people of Babylon gathered together and said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. God saw what they were doing and said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Historians interpret this story as an origin myth for languages. But that's what historians see in fables. They see history. In reality, language or tongue can also mean the gift of interpretation. In this case, God saw that if they all interpreted one idea in the same fashion, that is, they were all united in mind and voice, then nothing would be impossible for them. So God gave them the gift of their own voice and guess what happened? You know how people in groups usually don't challenge the status quo. We call this herd mentality. Most people are too afraid or lack confidence to challenge the herd mentality or the people in power. It's far safer to be an echo than to be an authentic voice. Usually more than 90% of people prefer to keep quiet and only a few choose to speak up in such situations. That's when both common fools and visionary dreamers seize the moment to shine. Fools speak without thinking, while dreamers speak to say the authentic truth. So what happened when God gave the people of Babylon their own voices? What was their take on the whole tower building business? I'm sure a guy said, that's the dumbest idea ever. How is building a tower going to make a name for ourselves and stop us from scattering? This is nothing but a conspiracy to gain our money and labor. And I'm sure the bricklayers are part of this. Somebody else probably said, wait a minute people, why should we build a tower to reach the heavens? Let's build a beautiful garden instead and the heavens will come to us. To be fair, both of these guys sounds like visionaries and fools, but we do know that the hanging gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The morals of the story are clear. Whenever large groups of people are of one mind, they can achieve something great like building the pyramids or sending people into space. However, they can also achieve heinous acts like the genocides of 20th century totalitarian regimes or sending a dog to die in space. That's why we must always question and doubt whatever the public or powerful people suggest. Speaking of space travel, what do you think about Elon Musk and his plan to go to Mars in order to save humanity? Don't get me wrong, I'm all about going to Mars but the whole Saving Humanity Act is a bit too much for me. I mean, somebody already died to save humanity 2000 years ago. And it's done. We're already saved. We don't need any more saving, do we? In fact, I'd love it if Elon Musk makes it to Mars. He can take all the other would-be saviors with him. You know, people like Bill Gates, Greta Thunberg, Kanye West and Tony Stark. Now, that's a sitcom I'd watch. But jokes aside, which archetype does Elon Musk sound like? Is he a visionary dreamer or is he a fool? 
my guess is he is neither. To me, he is one of the tower builders. They are the ones who manage to employ the group energy into ambitious projects. In an alternate version of the biblical story, the tower was supposed to reach the heavenly gods. Now, that's an obvious case of a wild goose chase. In fairy tales, towers are the homes of wizards, dragons and Disney princesses. In our contemporary reality, towers are most often the homes of powerful multinational corporations. Always beware the tower builders. To them, we're just tools and pawns on the chessboard. The second thing we should examine to distinguish visionary dreamers from skillful pretenders is whether their words match their deeds. Great ideas often create great opposition. A great dream can be used as a powerful banner that unites its supporters or is a mere slogan that creates chaos and diversion. Take Mohandas Gandhi for example. The man pledged himself to Indian independence through non-violence and he united the country around this dream. Gandhi and his supporters achieved this dream after 30 years of dedication and sacrifice. Throughout their struggle, Gandhi remained steadfast in his ethics and this earned him the undying love of his people and the respect of the British. The man remained true to his dream in both words and deed, and his struggle elevated everyone involved. Mohandas Gandhi was a true visionary dreamer who remained in history with his honorific title, Mahatma, meaning great soul. In contrast, most contemporary politicians and people in power seek to divide, not to unite. They thrive on conflict and chaos and they use great dreams as mere slogans in their propaganda. Furthermore, they pay only lip service to the high ideals they aspire to, while their actions reveal only their hypocrisy. I don't want to get into politics, so I'll just use the latest events surrounding Elon Musk as an example. What do you think about buying a social media company to protect freedom of speech? Thank God we have a billionaire playboy like Elon Musk to protect our freedom of speech. What has he done so far in this regard? Like a true champion of the downtrodden and disenfranchised, he restored Donald Trump's account who was banned for inciting violence. Then he banned Kanye for inciting violence. Don't get me wrong, I love to see one billionaire playboy rewarding another billionaire playboy and then punishing a third billionaire playboy. But what does it have to do with freedom of speech? To me, it's just a PR campaign to divert attention from laying off thousands of people during an economic crisis and squeezing money from social media users. After all, the only time when his words and actions align is in regard to money. That's his real mission in life, to make a lot of money. Everything else is just product branding. So always pay attention to what people say and do. Talk is easy, but consistent actions take character and devotion to an idea. The third question you should ask yourself to tell the difference between visionary dreamers and dangerous pretenders is how much do they stand to gain or lose in comparison to you. History is full of great people who risk everything in pursuit of their goals. By everything, I mean not only their lives and fortunes, but the lives and fortunes of everyone else involved. While such people usually had a great impact on the world, the impact was hardly positive. Take Julius Caesar, for example. The man was a brilliant general, inspiring leader and a true visionary of his times. However, his legacy is mostly associated with brutal conquests, the bloodiest civil war in Roman history and the end of the Roman Republic. 
his dream brought suffering to pretty much everyone of his contemporaries. Julius Caesar was a visionary dreamer, but he was also a corrupt politician, a power-hungry billionaire, and at times an arrogant fool. His ambitions and dreams pursued only his own vainglorious goals. In contrast, Dr. Ignaz Zemmelweis had nothing to gain from pursuing his visionary dream, and in the end, he lost everything. His theories, however, saved countless lives. All Dr. Zemmelweis wanted to do was to reduce the mortality rates among women giving birth during the 19th century. Back then, medicine had a very casual relationship with hygiene, and the good doctor suspected that this was a major reason for the high rates of childbed fever. This was an often fatal infection that was common in European hospitals at the time. After performing his own studies and observations, Dr. Zemmelweis suggested that physicians could reduce the incidence of childbed fever by simply washing their hands with a chlorine solution. Keep in mind this was in a time when bloodletting was a common prescription for a variety of conditions, even a simple headache. Naturally, his peers attacked him. Dr. Zemmelweis was repeatedly ridiculed by his colleagues and was subjected to countless frustrations at his job in Vienna General Hospital. His name was the laughing stock among physicians and in the end he left the hospital. However, he didn't give up. He took a low-paid job as a head physician at an obstetric ward in Pest. The place was suffering severely from childbed fever and women were often dying there. Dr. Zemmelweis got to work and asked his colleagues to wash their hands with a chlorine solution. He practically eliminated childbed fever at the hospital for the six years he was there. He went on to publish many articles and studies, he wrote many letters to other doctors and he continued his fight to eliminate childbed fever. The majority of the medical profession continued to ridicule him, but the good doctor never stopped fighting no matter the cost. The stress took its toll and his health deteriorated. In the end, he was committed to a mental asylum where he passed away. A few years after his death, his theories and practices were proven and adopted across all Europe. Dr. Ignaz Zemmelweis was a true visionary dreamer. Unfortunately, his dream to save lives took everything from him. If there is a lesson in his story, it is that we should be ever vigilant for men like him. Men who are decades ahead of us in their thinking. Men who are selfless and devoted. We should treasure such people. That's why I made this video. I'm so tired of seeing the fakes. I'm tired of their lies. I'm tired of having to deal with them. And it is so easy to recognize them. However, it is the real dreamers we should talk about. They're the ones that inspire us. They're the ones that make the world a better place. They're the ones we need to find. And now you know how to recognize them.